Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. My name is Kamika Love from thebudgetmom.com and today we are doing my full October budget recap. October was crazy. There was Halloween. There was some Chris, our Christmas spending for me at least going on. But I want to do a really quick recap of um, where my dollars went. So that's really what the budget recap is all about. I like to share with you guys the process and the method that I go through for analyzing and um, going through tracking my spending for the month of October and the worksheets that I use to help me figure out where my dollars actually went and if my spending is aligning with my financial goals. Now, the main question I get is, what does closing out your budget really mean? For me, it's about not blindly just following a budget. It's really easy to put numbers down on a piece of paper. It's a lot harder to figure out what those numbers are telling you. So that's essentially what closing out your budget really is. So what we're gonna start with is my October calendar. Now, this is my October budget calendar. Um, this is part of my budget overview that we'll be going over in November, but there's a couple of things I wanna show you what I had happening in October. We had Halloween going on. I was actually in LA for three days out of October. Um, we were in Money Magazine, so I flew down to LA for that. We were also in Tennessee in the month of October for a Dave Ramsey influencer event. So I did a ton of traveling in October, which means that I used some spending vacation saving, or I used some vacation savings um, as income for the month of October. So you're gonna see a little bit of a increase in my income, but I'll be going over my full monthly income just here in a second. So that's essentially what I had going on in October. For my budget recaps, it is all about a couple of different worksheets. Now, if you're using the Budget by Paycheck workbook, it's all about your expense trackers and the worksheets that are um, at the end of every month. So tracking your spending. I am a manual tracker. I actually don't believe in using electronic apps during this process, and here is why. Awareness. There is something psychologically different about writing something down versus just typing it out on a keyboard. And one of my biggest aha moments on my budgeting journey was getting everything in front of my face, taking pen to paper and writing out every dollar of where my money was going. So I use the highlighter method. If you are just starting out, tracking your spending is the number one step in my process. It should be the number one thing that you do before you even write down numbers for your budget because it's gonna answer a lot of questions for you. It's gonna answer what categories should be in your budget, what limits should be for those budget categories. Those deep down questions you wanna get answered right away. For me, I am a visual learner and visually seeing things on paper is what stimulates me, it's what keeps me motivated, it's what keeps me excited, and it's a great way to organize. Highlighters are your best friend when you are organizing your finances, especially if you're doing things manually. So just start tracking your spending. When you start to see like categories or a trend in your spending, start highlighting them. So maybe you see a ton of food purchases, pick out one color and start highlighting all your food purchases the same color. The same goes with like fun expenses or clothing expenses, gas is a huge one, car, so I have my gas and car expenses in one. You'll start to tweak your spending and how you're categorizing and organizing it as you go along. So I have one for my cash spending and I have one for my checking account. Now I am an all cash spender, what does that mean? It means I pay all of my bills online. Everything else in the rest of my life, I am spending cash. So there are two areas in my life where there's money movement. My checking account, which is for receiving income and paying bills, and my cash spending, which is for variable spending, that's spending that tends to change and go up and down every single month. It's not like a regular recurring bill where it's the same recurring bill every month. So with this, there's a couple of things I wanna point out. Now your starting balance. Your starting balance should be included in your monthly income. What is starting balance? Your starting balance is any leftover income from the previous month that you are carrying over to the new month. Because essentially you're gonna have be spending that money you're carrying over to, to the new month, so you have to count it as income. For spending, you have to have income to spend it. So there has to be 
some, an area like income minus expenses should equal zero, or they should be zeroing each other out at all times, especially if you're using a zero-based budget. So my cash expense tracker, I moved over $180 that I had left over in my clothing envelope from the previous month. And what I decided to do, I, make a very, I made a decision to make a quick uh, change to the way I'm organizing and budgeting that money. I had a clothing envelope in my budget. And in fact, you can probably see that in my October budget right here. Clothing, right here in my cash envelopes, I was setting aside $60 every month for clothing, but I found out I wasn't spending it. So every single time I was putting money and cash into this clothing envelope, I was just rolling it over, rolling it over, rolling it over every month. What does that make it? It's no longer a budget category. It now becomes a sinking fund. What is a sinking fund? A sinking fund is something that you save up a little bit every single month for a dedicated purpose or goal. That's what a sinking fund is. So my clothing envelope in my budget became a sinking fund, which means that the $180 that I had in my starting balance goes away because essentially I'm taking it out of my budget and I'm placing it into savings. So I crossed that out and I just said, move to sinking fund. So that was a big um, change I wanted to make sure I explained on my expense tracker. At the end of the month, I track from the beginning of the month to the end of the month, the first day to the, end, uh, the last day of the month. Now, another question that I get is, Miko, when should I close out my budget? When should I do this process? The number one thing I say is it depends on your tracking period. Now, there are some people out there who get paid bi-weekly, which means it's every two weeks and the date changes. Sometimes people get paid twice a month on very specific dates. It's up to you on when you want your tracking period to be. What is easiest for you? What's in your mind? What makes more sense to you? Because ultimately that's what matters is if it makes sense to you and you can understand what you're doing and what your finances are telling you. So if maybe you get paid on the 5th and the 20th, maybe you track from the first paycheck of this month to the first paycheck of, of next month and that's your tracking period. It's not necessarily 30 days. It's not necessarily from the first to the last day of the month, but it's your tracking per period based on your paycheck. So keep in mind, I'm a paycheck budgeter, which means that I budget my money every single time I get a paycheck. I pay the bills, I pull out cash for my envelopes, I color in my trackers. All of that is done every single time I get paid. If you are a paycheck budgeter, your tracking period could be anything that you want it to be. Now, Ryan, my assistant, as many of you guys know, I show her her budget very openly on my Instagram. She gets paid on the 5th and the 20th, but she closes out her budget from the first to the last day of the month. That means that she is carrying money from one month to the next month to use that cash until she gets paid again on the 5th. So it just it's all up to you. Now, on my checking account and my cash expense tracker, at the end of my tracking period, I add up all of my spending into my budget categories, which are all these different highlighter colors up here at the top. It makes it a lot easier to do, especially like me, I don't spend a lot. Um, but if you have say five or six expense trackers, the last thing you wanna do is get to the end of the month when you're trying to close out your budget and have to add up every single one of these lines. It's easier if you just total the entire page up here at the top. So that's the number one step in closing out your budget. Are you tracking your spending? And is it organized in a way that, you're un that you can understand? The next um, worksheet I wanna talk about is, there's three worksheets that I use to close out my budget. It's where did my money go? Essentially, that's what we're asking ourselves, right? And what I mean, when I said before, don't blindly follow a budget, this is the, the work that's going to get you to figure out what your numbers are telling you. Is your spending aligning with your financial goals? Did you meet your budget goals? Maybe you're setting month to month budget goals that you're trying to accomplish. Where did your dollars actually go? So monthly budget category breakdown is answering that question. Where did every dollar of your income go last month? And not only that, it allows you to organize it into categories. Let's talk about income very quickly. I know a lot of people are gonna see this and they're gonna, oh my gosh, you made $11,000 last month. No, in fact, I only earned a little over $4,000 last month. So why am I using an income amount of 11,000? Because your total monthly income 
for any, giving tra any given tracking period is your starting balance. So that money you're rolling over into the new month from last month and any incoming income. What is the definition of incoming income? That could be savings that you're now using and spending this month. That can mean gift cards. That's alimony. That's child support. That's your paycheck. All of that is incoming income. So very quickly, if you go to my expense trackers, I had very, a lot of uh, different sources for income. I had my paycheck, which is you can see in these top two lines, it equals about $4,200. I had, oh, I paid my student loans, I would say at the end of last year, and they are just now sent me a check this month saying, hey, you overpaid your student loan, so here's a check. So that was $85 in income. I had $4,000 total of income that I brought over from savings. So I made a $4,000 contribution to my house savings account. It's an investment account. And I had to have income to write that check. So what did I do? I moved money from my savings account into my checking account so I could write that check. That income that I moved over into my checking account is essentially income this month that I'm spending. So that's $4,000 of the 11,000 that you're seeing. And then I also had some vacation savings I used. I used $800 from my vacation savings because I, I went on some vacations uh, this month. So that's where the 11,166 comes from. It's not all earned income. It's savings that I've been saving for a long time or any other source of income. If you're seeing anything in green, I was under budget. If you're seeing anything in red, I was over budget. Now here's the thing. I have a monthly budget written down. I have some type of goal or limit I'm trying to stick to for a longer period of time rather than just my paycheck schedule. Now, a lot of people, when they hear the word monthly, they think from the first to the last day of the month. That's not necessarily what these numbers mean. Your monthly budget could be like for instance, let's go back to my budget calendar. Say you get paid on the 5th and the 20th of every single month. Maybe your um, month for your budget is from the 5th until the 5th of the following month. So it's not necessarily a 30 or 31 day time frame. I have been budgeting for so long, for over nine years now, I know what I should be spending in my budget. But if you're just starting out, look at your past spending and figure out your tracking period and then figure out how much you spent in those categories or your budget categories during that entire uh, tracking period, not just your paycheck period. So $400 for food is what usually what I like to um, do every single month. $750 for insurance is usually what I spend. Spend about $400 a month on utilities. $150 on my son. Now I have a son category in my budget. What does that include? Daycare and then some other things that pop up throughout the month. How is my daycare only hundred bucks? I get this question every single time I share my budget on any platform. I don't have your traditional childcare costs. I'm really blessed and fortunate that my grandma watches my son and I reimburse her for gas and food for the time she has my son. I'm also self-employed, which means that my son can be with me a lot more than when say I was working a full-time job. So that's the current situation. $100 a month is what I pay grandma um, for when she has him. So it's very, very low. Household, household, that includes rent and any other paper towels, cleaning supplies, Kleenex, um, that type of, of stuff. So that's 930. My rent is only 850. I live in a very small, small, tiny square foot apartment, older apartment here in Spokane, Washington. So my rent's only 850. And then I usually try to save about $1,500 a month every month from my paychecks. So that's my monthly budget. That's what I'm estimating. But I have a column here that says monthly spent. This is what I actually spent according to my spending trackers. So I only spent $273 on food this month, um, which is $127 under budget. Why was it so low? Well, as you can see from my budget calendar, I was traveling for at least two weeks in the month of October. 
And some of those, most of those days I was gone, I was on business um, trip, which means that I used my business income. Now my business finances and my personal finances are completely 100% separate. And if you own a business, I highly suggest that you keep them separate for um, tax, one, tax purposes, but if any, um, in any case of audit, you wanna make sure that your business finances are completely separate, which means I have separate business savings. I have separate business checkings. I have separate business um, everything. I mean, everything. So um, that's why my food was so low because I wasn't spending my personal income on food while I was gone. I was over budget in a couple of categories. One was utilities. I was on a trip to the Dominican Republic uh, last month, and so I had some international charges on my cell phone, we're working that out, uh, that I needed to pay. Um, so while we're in negotiation still with that bill, I'm, I'm, I paid it while we're in negotiation. So that's why it's $115 more. Um, than what I budgeted for. And then savings, look at savings. So this is three, $3,625 that I spent on savings and we'll be getting to why this number or where this number came from here in just a second. But on this column, the percent of in, percentage of income, have you ever asked yourself, I wonder what percent of my income goes towards food? I wonder what percent of income goes towards housing? Now, I know there are some budgeting methods out there. One of them is percentage-based budgeting which means that you should be spending a certain percentage of your income on certain things, housing, transportation, child costs, those types of things. And, and there are a lot of different um, experts out there that said, oh, you should be spending this about this percentage on housing, this percentage on childcare if you wanna be financially successful. No, I do not believe in percentage-based budgeting because here's one thing that it, it fails to miss, lifestyle inflation. If your income is increasing because you are getting paid more, that doesn't necessarily mean that your housing, childcare costs, food costs, and all that should be going up as well. So I have a big problem with it because of the way it handles lifestyle inflation. I don't feel like people should go out and spend a bigger percentage on their house because they're making more. In fact, my mind, the wealthiest people in the world are the ones that keep their budget the same or they challenge themselves to spend less even though their income is rising. So that's why I'm not huge into percentages, but this does give you uh, percentages of where your money went. I like to see as I go along from month to month, well, a couple months ago, you know, 46% of my money went towards savings. It's nice to have that reference. The next worksheet we're gonna talk about is my monthly debt and savings breakdown. It's important to know how much money went towards debt in a month. It's really important to know how much savings you put away in a month, but that's not the most important questions. The most important question you should be asking is, what are you saving for? And what specific debt am I paying off? Because that's where your financial goals come into play. You wanna make sure that your spending is aligning with your financial goals. So you should be prioritizing those goals before you start these worksheets. It's really important because you need to know where you're throwing your money. I get a lot of questions like, well, Miko, I have leftover cash in my envelopes. Where should it go? Well, my number one response is, well, what's your number one priority? What's the number one thing that's the most important to you right now? That's where your spending should be going, whether it's towards a specific debt or a certain savings goal. So I don't have debt, but the number one uh, purpose of this monthly debt and savings breakdown is I wanna move you away from just saying, hey, I saved this much. I want you to start thinking about the details. So out of the $11,000 I had in income for October, I saved $5,000 of that. That's 46% of my income. But the real question is, what am I saving for? My house. 86% of the money that I saved went towards my house savings goal. Guess what? That's my number one priority right now, and my spending reflects that. I had 5% go towards sinking funds, which is saving for the future. 2% went towards my, college, my son's college fund, 1% towards car maintenance, and one that doesn't usually show up in this worksheet is vacation. So I took some money with me, some cash on vacation, and I didn't end up spending it all. So it went right back into vacation savings and that's the 343 that you're seeing here. So if you're doing this correctly, 
your savings breakdown should equal 100% or the same amount of your total monthly saved for the month. So that's the monthly debt and savings breakdown. The next worksheet is my monthly, monthly sp spending comparison. Why should you be looking at what you spent this month compared to last month? It's gonna tell you if your small financial goals are getting accomplished. I don't know if you've ever said to yourself, next month, I like to spend $100 less in my food budget. Or next month, I really wanna challenge myself to bring down my utility uh, expenses or my utility bill. This is gonna tell you if you're meeting those goals and it's gonna give you a very short time frame to see some trends. So we're, we are um, looking at October versus September. Monthly income change, why do I have that written down? Because if your income is decreasing or increasing in a tracking period, your spending better reflect that. So if you were paid more, that means every dollar of that income should have a plan and it should be spent somewhere in your budget. And same if it decreased. If your income decreased for the month, you should be decreasing one of your categories. My income increased by $4,645. Huge jump, I know what you might be thinking, but don't forget. Of that, I moved $4,000 from my savings into my checking account. So 4,000 of that is just savings, it's not earned income. If it's in red or pink, I spent more than I did last month. If it's in green, I spent less than. Do you notice how they're all in pink? Because my income increased, which means that my spending increased. So look at savings, $4,152 increase from last month. That's where that $4,000 savings I used as income for this month went to, that house savings. So this is great to see how are you doing compared to next month and are you reaching those small month to month goals that you're making for yourself. So um, another thing with my budget recaps, I like to show very quickly um, how I am tracking these goals, some areas of my life visually that keep me motivated. One of the things that I use are sinking funds envelopes. Now, holidays and events, I like to set a little bit each month aside for holidays events that are happening in the, in the future so I don't feel pressured to use debt. This is what they look like. They have little trackers that you can color in every single time you hit a, uh, you save some money, you can color in and keep track. Now, this month was really special. I hit my Christmas savings goal this month. Um, I now have $803. They all have little trackers on the back that you can keep track of how much you're saving for your each sinking fund. These are available. I'll put a link in the description of this video for my sinking funds envelopes. They're really cute. Um, but as you can see, like 4th of July, I'm already working on 4th of July 2020, and I'm almost already at my goal, and we're still in 2019. So it's an amazing feeling to know that all of these things are going to be happening next year, and I have cash already set aside. So that's a great thing. I'm even saving for birthdays. I'm saving for my puppy envelope, and we have Valentine's going on. So I just track them like 11-1, I tracked how much I put in there and the updated balance. So that's currently how I'm doing that. Let me show you very quickly my yearly savings tracker. Now I didn't have time to get to these, uh, but I wanna at least show you what I'm gonna be filling out. It's great to see your sinking funds individually like this. It's great to look at every single individual goal and see where you are. For me, I like to see my sinking funds all on one sheet and see exactly where I am with all of them in one place. That's what I use my sinking, sa sinking fund saving visuals. So this is 2020. So keep that in mind, this is for next year. Here's where I'm at with my sinking funds goals. So as you can see, I'm about to hit my Valentine's one. I'm not far from my son's birthday. Here's where I'm at with 2019. I've hit a lot of these throughout the year, like we already did Valentine's, 4th of July, 4th of July, my son's birthday already happened, Christmas I just hit, back to school. So all of these have been hit. The only one I'm still really working on is my puppy one, and that, we have a $600 goal for that, but it's not something that has a specific goal date. It's just saving up for the puppy, the new puppy when we build the house. So, um, and clothing, 
is another one where it's, I don't have a specific goal amount. I'm just saving up until I, when I wanna use it. So this is where, and I'll start saving again for Christmas next month. Since I save, hit my goal this month, I'll start saving for Christmas again next month. So that's one of the um, trackers. The next one that I didn't get time to write down and I haven't gotten to yet, but I wanna show you very quickly, is my yearly spending overview. It's nice for you to analyze and, and know your finances from month to month. But where the big aha moments come from is noticing trends in your finances and in your spending. That's what allows you to tweak in your perfect and perfect your budget as you go along. It's what makes your bu budget better and better and better as you do it. So with my food budget, you can see I'm spending around 300 to $400 every month. Gradually goes up and down, but that's about the average. And then over here, when the year is over, I can see how much exactly I spent on food for the entire year, how much I spent on car expenses, how much I spent on utilities for the entire year. So I just had to fill in October. I haven't done that yet. Now with my yearly balance overview, I like to see my savings balance over time, as well as if I had debt, I would wanna see my debt balance over time, your retirement balance over time, and your net worth over time, I think are, are the, the main ones that I feel you should be keeping track of every single month. So I still need to fill in October, and um, I'll be doing that probably within the next couple of days, and I need to fill in my graph. So I just graph my net worth and my savings balance. Both of these, you should see an upward trend. So I just wanted to very quickly let you know, I haven't got to these ones, but I plan on getting, getting to them. So that is my full budget recap for October. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe.